behind the romance and spectacle of a city by night is the reality that the majority of the electricity we use is generated by fossil fuels. It's an inconvenient truth, but unless we change the way we generate power, we risk rapid climate change caused by emissions of greenhouse gases. Many leaders in government and science say that this change is now urgent. But can we adapt quickly enough? Euronews travelled to Paris to ask the International Energy Agency's chief economist, Fatih Birol, if we will see any great changes in our energy mix by 2030. Dr. Viral is author of the IEA's flagship publication, The World Energy Outlook, an internationally respected publication consulted by energy professionals all over the world. What you've said is what we need is an energy revolution. How will that revolution take place? If you want to address the climate change without making a major change in the energy sector, you have no chance whatsoever to have an outcome. So, what kind of change in the energy sector? First, I would like to see much more renewables than now. Much more aggressive renewable energies, especially wind, solar, hydropower, uh, biomass. Second, I would like to see that the energy is used much more efficiently than we are using now. How we use our cars, light bulbs, uh, uh, computers and so on. Much more efficiently. Third, I would also like to see more nuclear power in the global energy mix, especially in the countries where it is acceptable because nuclear energy doesn't emit carbon dioxide emissions. So these are some of the uh, solutions with the existing technologies. But in addition to that, I would like to see a revolution how we uh, move around the world, transportation uh, system. Uh, namely, moving from an oil-based transportation system slowly to the transportation system where the electricity is the base would be very beneficial to address the uh, climate change uh, issues. Let's talk about baseload electricity for a moment. At the moment, I think it's between 80 and 85 percent of it comes um, from fossil fuels. Now, that's not going to change in 20 years, is it? We're basically going to still use fossil fuels to generate baseload power. We'll, we'll need it, won't we? We definitely need it, and, uh, we, but the uh, question is how much we need it. We can slow down uh, this uh, amount of fossil fuel uh, we are going to use, and we can use fossil fuels in a less polluting way. How, for example, in the United States, in the next uh, 15 years, half of the coal-fired power plants are going to retire. They are coming to our end of their economic lifetime. So it is a very good opportunity to replace those coal-fired power plants with natural gas, for example, or with uh, renewables, or with nuclear power. The same applies to China. Today, a big uh, portion of the Chinese electricity comes from coal, and we have an opportunity in uh, China to get more gas and more renewables. So we will definitely rely on fossil fuels, but the amount of that reliance may be reduced somewhat by uh, using less or no carbon emitting fuels. And plus, we have a hope, a technology, namely carbon capture and storage. Perhaps we can make use of them as well. I have to ask you, is it time we gave up on international climate conferences and looked for some other way of achieving globally binding um, agreements on emissions reduction? I have three answers to you. Yes, do. No, no, and no. Because if we cannot bring all these countries together, it is impossible to uh, manage the reductions in a meaningful way and in a fast way. In your World Energy Outlook, you also say that China will surpass America um, in uses of energy by 2030, which is the frame of reference we've chosen. How do you stop them using coal? Yeah. Now, when we look at the responsibility worldwide, currently there are five major countries, 
China, US, EU, India, and Japan. These are the five countries make about more than two thirds of the emissions. If those five countries were to agree to find a solution, we would solve bulk of the problem. Without a, a major change in the energy sector, we have no chance whatsoever to solve the problem. What you're saying is that unless a binding global agreement is achieved, then we face a bleak future. I think so. There, there will be uh, some efforts on a country by country basis in Europe, in the US, in China, sometimes driven by the climate change concerns, sometimes driven by the energy security concerns. The using less fossil fuels uh, will be the way to go. But uh, to come to uh, 450, or in other words, to limit the temperature increase two degrees Celsius, as agreed in Copenhagen, will be very, very difficult. In the second part of our program, we travel to Freiburg in Germany. Freiburg has reduced its CO2 emissions by 20%, and it's achieved this without nuclear power or electric vehicles. How? It's surprisingly simple. <laughs> 